A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. From Paul, appointed by God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, and from our brother Timothy to the saints in Colossae, our faithful brothers in Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. We have never failed to remember you in our prayers and to give thanks for you to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, ever since we heard about your faith in Christ and the love that you show toward all the saints because of the hope which is stored up for you in heaven. It is only recently that you heard of this when it was announced in the message of the truth. The good news which has reached you is spreading all over the world and producing the same results as it has among you ever since the day that you heard about God's grace and understood what this really is. Epaphras, who taught you, is one of our closest fellow workers and a faithful deputy for us as Christ's servant. And it was he who told us all about your love in the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I trust, I trust in, in the, the goodness, goodness of God, God forever, forever and, and ever. ever. I am like a growing olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. I will thank you forevermore, for this is your doing. I will proclaim that your name is good in the presence of your friends. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of the Lord remains forever. What is this word? It is the good news that has been brought to you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Leaving the synagogue, Jesus went to Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him to do something for her. Leaning over her, he rebuked the fever, and it left her. And she immediately got up and began to, and began to wait on them. At sunset, all those who had friends suffering from diseases of one kind or another brought them to him, and laying his hands on each, he cured them. Devils, too, came out of many people, howling, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. When daylight came, he left the house and made his way to a lonely place. The crowds went to look for him, and when they had caught up with him, they wanted to prevent him leaving them. But he answered, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns too, because that is what I was sent to do. And he continued his preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a beautiful line in the first reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. I think sometimes with the first reading, uh, they can be packed with beautiful lines, but we almost tend to forget about them because we, we then get the Gospel and tend to focus on the Gospel. Uh, but one line that really stood out to me as I was going through these readings last night is this. When you heard about God's grace and understood 
what this really is. God's grace. Do we understand what it really is? Well, a simple definition is this. God's grace is the free, unmerited gift of God's Holy Spirit, which is given to all believers as a guide and an inspiration. A free gift of God's Holy Spirit. That's, that's, the, sim- that's the definition of grace in its simplest form. We need grace in order to live our lives fruitfully and to the full. And God has promised us his grace, and so we can always rely on on, on his promises. He's a God of promises, and we must remember to thank him for always offering us that gift of grace. And we must remember that we need that grace in order to be guided, to do the right things, uh, to be inspired, to think the right things, and to act in in a way that is godly, in a way that is holy, a way that Jesus wants us to act. Grace is our connection to God. It keeps us in connection with God. It's a bit like Wi-Fi. Uh, it's funny, I don't know, it's definitely in my generation. The first thing you do when you go inside a cafe or a restaurant or anything is you ask for the Wi-Fi code. You cannot be disconnected from Wi-Fi because essentially you'd be disconnecting yourself from all your friends and all your family because we're always, well, I'd say my generation, I don't know about, about you guys as well, um, always, always texting. It's the, it's the way we stay in touch with each other. And if we don't have Wi-Fi, it's a disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster. Well, why don't we think the same way about grace? We, people are so, so obsessed with having Wi-Fi. Why aren't they obsessed with having grace as well? Well, as Christians, we need to be obsessed about grace in the same way as we are obsessed about Wi-Fi. We put so much effort into making sure we have good Wi-Fi, we get a good router, we get the latest phone with 5G on it. We ask the waiter and the the librarian and the technician, what's the Wi-Fi code, what's the Wi-Fi code? Well, the same is true for Grace. We need to do the right things to receive God's grace. Coming to the Eucharist, receiving our Lord reverently in the Blessed Sacrament. Confession, regular confession, not out of fear, but as a practice of just cleaning out the cupboards regularly. If we don't dust your house, it gets dirty. The same is true for your soul. If you don't dust your soul through confession, it will get dirty and grace won't be able to reach you. You'll you'll have a poor reception. Um, Prayer is the other thing and works of charity. Remember when we serve our brothers and sisters, what does Jesus say? When you serve them, you're serving me. These are the things that Jesus asks us to do, not because we have to please some eternally unpleasable divine power, but because these are the ways to have that connectivity with God, that connection, that, that Wi-Fi, that grace that we need in order to live.